Hello, I'm Richard Quartz, Chief Executive of the British Council for Offices, the BCO, and welcome to the latest in our series of interviews we call The New Normal. Each week I talk to a member about the coronavirus pandemic and its impact on the office sector. Now, this week's theme has a broad engineering focus, and where better to turn than an engineer? Happily, my guest is exactly that, and also a very good friend of the BCO, and none other than Bill Price. So welcome, Bill. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. It's a great pleasure to have you with us, and thank you very much for spending some time with me. Uh, for those who may not know, Bill is a structural engineer by background and a director at WSP. His career has included buildings across many sectors, usually delivering multidisciplinary engineering services. Bill was responsible for the early design development stages of the Shard and associated with all of the projects at London Bridge. Since 2012, Bill has been closely associated with thought leadership and delivery around rail overbuild. His papers for WSP include Out of Thin Air, and building our way out of a crisis and possibly worth dusting that one down at the moment. But more important than, than all of that, as I often say at this stage, is Bill's involvement with the BCO, which has principally been with the annual conference and the technical tour program, where he worked on the conferences in New York, Madrid, Chicago, London 2017, and what will now be Toronto. 2021, and Bill also co-edited the BCO Strategic Design Guide to Tall Buildings in 2016. So welcome again, Bill. I'm very grateful to you for spending some time with us this morning. I'll jump straight to questions, if I may, may and start with the broad theme of construction. And how well, Bill, do you think that commercial construction is adapting to the pandemic? particularly the constraints of social distancing. In thinking about construction, there are, there, I always feel there are sort of two areas to it. There's sort of indoor stuff and outdoor stuff. And I think in this period, a lot of the outdoor uh, activities have actually continued. I think uh, the workforce has been uh, encouraged to go uh, on, onto site and continue where possible. And I think in many cases that uh, distancing has been uh, enabled by the nature of the work. Uh, things like uh, demolition, where you have maybe just have one person in a machine, or uh, piling, or basements, or concrete work. Um, th those kinds of things uh, seem to be manageable in, in this space. I think on the interior uh, type activities, um, perhaps to do with the fit out. Um, mechanical, electrical, installation type work, it becomes far more difficult. And I think uh, quite a bit of that work has, has not been able to continue. Well, I'm definitely aware of um, the Paddington Square job, for example, has essentially continued. That's all groundworks and come, you know, early stage stuff. Um, but equally, I'm aware of a, a major hotel refurbishment that's going on at the moment uh, in the West End. And if anything there, the contractors have asked for uh, design information to be kind of accelerating because there aren't any people there. So the, the kind of, the slight irony of that is that although the hotel is in terribly bad shape, the construction project ha has, has been able to, to get on with things because there haven't been the, uh, the guests there. And then the other thing, you know, in terms of us being designers and consultants, um, we have been able to visit sites through um, accompanying somebody uh, or with a camera or talking us through things or sending us photographs. So actually the, the ability to interact with specific site situations and changes and you know what our opinion is has actually continued quite satisfactorily and I think that has perhaps surprised us a bit um, but we seem to have we seem to be managing uh, where where the, that work can happen. It's very interesting, Bill, what you say about the the hotel, and it, it sort of it makes me think of of 
comments by Grant Shatz, the Transport Minister, about you know what they've been trying to do, you know, in the with the absence of people in terms of road and and, and rail uh, refurbishment and, and engineering work, which is in, is obviously a lot easier when you've got so few people travelling. And I can see that in a in a in an empty hotel. I'm going to come on to transport a bit later, but I'll move now, if I may, Bill, to design. And do you think that in the longer term, we will see a significant change in the design of office buildings as a result of the pandemic? I think this is, this is a, uh, there's a, a quote, isn't it? This is a Kodak moment. You know, we have to take, uh, we have to not, not blow this opportunity to, um, to really rethink a lot, a lot of the things that, that we've worked towards for so, for so long. The way that we even use an office and the way we think about an office. I think all, all of, you know, so many things are really under review. I mean, here am I at home. Am, am I in a home or am I in an office? You know, it's a, it's a thought that's, that's running through, uh, through all of us uh, through, all, all the time. So in the office, um, you know, the entry sequence, the lobby, uh, how we get in and out of buildings, how we might be monitored and controlled. Uh, I think the distinction, you know, you, we have owner-occupier buildings, um, but we also have um, uh, landlord and tenant scenarios. So, so you might have situations where the landlord is thinking, who are my tenants and who, who, what, who are the individuals coming into my building and what sort of medical state might they be in? We never, nobody's ever thought about that, but you might be thinking about it from a brand and a kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, future acceptability, desirability almost of that particular office. So then those kinds of ideas might get turned around into engineering considerations um, to do with access, you know, key fobs, health checks, um, you know, who even kind of um, uh, tag and, and, and trace um, uh, on a very local basis to try and keep tra track of, you know, who's, who, is, who is where, all of which have GDPR and, you know, per personal data implications. But I mean, all of that, I think, are just a few of the ingredients that are going to affect the way that we design buildings. It's fascinating stuff, Bill, and, and a theme, unsurprisingly, a common theme in these interviews has been the vaccine and what might happen after that. But even if there is a, a vaccine that is, that is discovered for, for COVID-19, realistically no earlier than next year, that doesn't mean there won't be a variant, another pandemic, and, and designing, trying to design your way out of that, I agree, is, is going to be very much factor in, in the months and, and years to come. I'd like to switch now to a specific class of, of office, if I may, a specialism of yours, and that's tall buildings. And of course, you worked on, on Europe's tallest, the, the Shard. But do you think, Bill, the nature of tall buildings presents particular, possibly unique challenges in the context of the coronavirus? I think the key distinguishing feature of a tall building is the vertical transportation, that is the lift. I think once you get onto an office floor, it's it's not uh, such a big deal whether it's on the second, tenth, or or you know fifty eighth floor, really. Um, I mean there are some things, but um, in principle, it's it's how to how to get into the space. So you know lifts invented uh, in the eighteen fifties. There are 170 years of, of lift evolution. There's something like 18 million lifts in the world right now. Um, the, all that work has really been, I think you could say, aimed at anti-distancing. It's all been about trying to get the most people onto a given floor as quickly and efficiently as possible in the morning peak. That is what the BCO standards are written around. And some extremely clever people have worked extremely hard 
to make those lifts do that. Uh, to the extent that we have uh, hall call uh, systems, we, we have uh, double-decker lifts, um, all trying to make the buildings more and more efficient um, to meet occupancy levels like uh, one to six, one to eight maybe. So the, the, these are all things that are just not okay with distancing. So I think the, the, uh, the challenge for tall buildings is gonna be how to really make people uh, feel safe and also to get them to their, to their workplace. Um, I know somebody quite well that, that we mentioned the Chicago conference, Richard, and one of the fantastic buildings we visited there was the uh, 330 North Wabash, the old IBM Mies van der Rohe tower. And uh, the person I know went into that office last week and the way that they were unable to go in was through a sort of pre-lift lobby concierge queue arrangement. So they were allowing four people into each lift car. That, those are big lift cars, there are 21 person lifts, uh, four people only in it, and people waiting for their turn to go to that uh, space. No touching buttons, and really a, a managed entry sequence. Um, now, I, I use that because that was on our tour plan for Chicago, and that is a building that people have been encouraged to go back to. Um, but you can think of many of our London buildings um, might have to be using that kind of approach to, to, to give people access. Very interesting, Bill. And I, your phrase, anti-distancing, fascinating. And I, you're, you're absolutely right, of course. I mean, we've all done it. You know, you go into a, 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 busy, a busy tower at peak time and the loadings are, are huge and, mm -hmm. and a very, very interesting point. I'm conscious of time, Bill, so I'm, I'm going to switch to my next theme, if I may, and we, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but that's transport. And in most cities, public transport is pretty much an essential part of the mix. But in the absence of a vaccine, what design solutions might be introduced to allow passenger numbers to return to something approaching I think there are very few design solutions that are really going to uh, still achieve safe, safe travel. Uh, you know, if you think about these mo modes of travel and you, you know, you could think of um, the running order might be trains, tubes, buses, and then even lifts. These are all transport devices, uh, which traditionally run on, on density. Um, I mean, at the moment we're working on two meters, but in Denmark right now, I can tell you that uh, they've reduced that to one meter. Um, I, I think people uh, will be driven by whatever mode of transport they feel most safe on. And I, I can see that, that you could have situations where, um, let's say if you, get, you get on a train at your stop, uh, it comes to uh, the station three stops down. People are very, very keen by that time to get on your train. And I can imagine people getting off that train thinking, there's too many people here. I'm, I'm going to choose to be late or choose not to be in that scenario. I mean, something else uh, really is people sometimes talk about reducing density by spreading the time periods over which people travel. TFL really say that their busy times are between 5.45 and 8.15, or between 4 and 5.30. Uh, Network Rail, uh, their off-peak period is 10 until 3.30. Now, you, you know, there's a limit to, to being able to splurge these peaks out because most people, many, many people have their travel linked to aspects of the rest of their lives, like um, childcare, schools, colleagues, meal times, whether it's dark, whether it's light. So, so yes, there's a bit of splurging out of, of travel that could be done to try and reduce numbers. But I, I, you know, you know the, the, it, the whole thing is like an interlocked, integrated existence that we have. 
and and it's it's going to take quite a while i think to to really work out how to 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 manage numbers and and travel to 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 you know to get people into those uh, traditional uh, office settings i think you're absolutely right bill in, in many ways that is perhaps the most challenging immediate problem we both have the joy of, of traveling on, on southwestern railway mm. in, into london which is challenging at, at the best of times and and anyone who lives on a on a busy commuter line traveling into into london knows what it's like when it's all meant to be working and and the idea of introducing social distancing for that and the, for the volumes of people concerned i think is going to be enormously problematic problematic and a big deterrent big deterrent for many so i think you're absolutely right i'm conscious of time bill and unfortunately i've only got time for one more which i do want to cover and that i've given the theme looking ahead now britain has an astonishing history of innovation and excellence in engineering and that's clearly expressed in, in the office sector so do you feel bill that britain will be able to design its way out of this and future pandemics in general terms um, and so on so i do expect that we will come up with uh, answers and solutions which enable um, uh, the 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 traditional kind of functionality of what we did in offices uh, uh, to continue in in some sense and in terms of design i think we'll see that the whole the whole thing with this uh, virus is that it's um, it, distribution uh, uh, through through the air and by proximity and i can see that we might move to um, office uh, air management air conditioning systems which which bring air in at low level and air is extracted at high level this you know displacement systems it's frequently a, 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 an approach that we look at but actually don't implement that often so i think we could see m more uh, slow moving air passive um, radiant cool for radiant warmth kind of effects uh, in, in buildings um People have talked about opening windows. Um, a slightly interesting thing about that is that what, in this period, we've all witnessed the kind of reduced noise and um, lack of cars, air quality improvements. And so the usual arguments about keeping windows shut uh, uh, to keep pollutants out might start to go away. But if, you are, if you're the person next to the window in, in the office, then you're probably in a great place. But if you're on the other side, then you might be actually picking up everybody else's kind of um, detritus in the air. So there may still be uh, a desire not really to have opening windows. And opening windows are an issue on a tall building anyway. Um, I think we you, are your, the BCO's standards, need almost a review of every line to wonder how we may introduce um, uh, more adaptable, flexible space, and accommodate maybe the the, the cleaning and um, uh, the the management of of the space in in a in a way that we've never really envisaged. I, I, if I come back to lifts, um, I've never heard a client say, um, "Really, Bill, I'd like you to make the lifts as generous as you possibly can." I would, <laughs> I'd like. I'd like the lifts to have a sense of grandeur and openness and you know plenty of space around people as they make their journey to my floor. There, there is a, a bit of a statistic about, uh, I think not, if you're on the first floor, 90% of people are prepared to walk there. Second floor, 50% of people. Third floor, 25% of people. Fourth floor, nobody walks. And, and that's, you know, you, you might get some enthusiasts of people in our building in Chancery Lane. Um, some, some very excitable people do walk to the fifth floor uh, as their key piece of um, or exercise. But they are, that is a total exception. And then the other problem with stairs is the whole space around disability um, and, and discrimination about how you're meant to get somewhere. So you're always going to need lifts. This is not going to 
go uh, There's a few it, thoughts there, Richard. There are, there are many, Bill. It's been absolutely fascinating. I think you're, you're right on the, on the fresh air issue. That's a theme that, that's come out uh, you know, in, in many of these discussions, the importance of, of fresh air. And I think that's something that people will, will demand. On lifts, I'm reminded, I remember going, I haven't been to Harrods for donkey's years, but I remember going as a, as a child, and I don't know if they still have them, there was a novelty value, they had, they, they'd kept lifts that had sort of attendants with them, and they would mm. be, a chap who would sit on a sort of stool and, and open, open the gates, which was all rather splendid and, and grand. But there we are, sadly we are out of time. It's been, it's been absolutely fascinating and a great pleasure as always, Bill, to talk to you. I'm, I'm very grateful to you. Thank you very much. I do hope that you've enjoyed this interview as much as I have. And until next time, thank you very much. And from Bill and from me, goodbye.